Kipsy with Tommy Morrison, who once felt about HIV and his wife, if I pushed her away, she'd never forgive me. I'd never forgive myself if I didn't. They stuck together through the disease, the house fire, and a series of arrests, but not prison. Welcome back to Up Close. We continue with Tommy Morrison, the former heavyweight boxing champion who joins us from the Southwest Arkansas Correctional Facility. And Tommy, you mentioned in the first segment that uh, your wife Dawn is filing for divorce, and it's a pretty amazing story of how you got together, how she endured things over the years. You actually got married after you were diagnosed with HIV, and they were pretty open and blatant about the fact that you two were having unprotected sex despite the fact that you'd been diagnosed. What happened to the marriage? Well, what happened to the marriage is me coming here. Uh, you know, I can't uh, expect any woman to not get lonely. You know, I mean, I at first was uh, had was very apprehensive about coming here. I was thinking about take, you know catching the next plane to Cancun or something. But uh, she promised me that she would be here when I got out, and uh, wasn't but a month or two later once I got here that she told me she wanted to file for divorce. Uh, you know, this woman I've been in love with for 14 years. I met her when she was a freshman in high school. And uh, we were off and on for uh, a lot of years. And it was uh, kind of a big shock to me and uh, saddened me a great deal. Uh, I'll never get over her. Why would this, you know, people think that HIV, which usually leads to AIDS, is a death sentence in its own right. This, if you serve this sentence, which was eight years suspended, two years sentence and then probably get out at the end of this year why was this so much different than that well explain your question a little better well she stuck with you through things that might be very difficult and there were right. circumstances surrounding it that it very likely could have come although you don't think it did from promiscuous right. sex with other people and she well, stuck through all that through the fact that you had this deadly disease and that she could have contracted it because you didn't have protected sex with each other, and yet now you get sentenced to what will probably be a one-year prison sentence if she yeah. leaves you. Well, I think what the, uh, a lot of it had to do with money. You know, they're, uh, you know, it seemed like women were always around when you have a lot of money. <laughs> but when you don't, you know, I, I, not to say that she, she had a uh, strong urge to have children. Uh, I had a vasectomy about five years ago, uh, you know, which, because I have two sons of my own, and one stepson now. Uh, but they've come up with this new technique called sperm washing, which I saw on the Montana Williams show, where there's a guy that was HIV positive and his wife was HIV negative, and they've been having sex, unprotected sex, for you know seven, eight years, just like myself. And neither one of them have uh, contracted it. But through this sperm washing technique that they have, they've delivered I had over 1,500 artificially inseminated uh, pregnancies and have delivered over 1,500 babies HIV negative. And man, that to me is, you know, that is just a blessing from God. Because I've always wanted a little girl. And uh, it looks like now I'll be able to do that. How would you feel if Dawn comes up HIV positive at some point in the future? Well, she didn't get it from me. I haven't slept with a woman in six months. Uh, do you still advocate to people? I know what you just said, but I know you're taking a lot of heat, especially from the HIV and AIDS community. And you take a lot of responsibility for being a public advocate of this thing, and yet some of the practices that you've had with your disease go completely against what they project. Exactly. You know, I think that there's, you know, the, the government has a lot of, there's a lot of government conspiracies that are going, there's a lot of things that we don't know. You know, the government only lets us know what, what they want us to know. You know, I think it, the fact that HIV causes, they said the HIV causes the AIDS hypothesis. Now, that's how it's written down in the National Archives. Now, you look up a hypothesis in the dictionary, it says an educated guess or opinion. You know, it's, it's an unproven theory. AZT is what kills people. You take AZT and you unwrap it, you look in the bottle, there's a little list and, uh, of the side effects of the medication. Well, the side effects of the medication of AZT match identical to the symptoms of AIDS. So drugs is what causes AIDS. If you don't want to die of AIDS, quit doing drugs. 
Tommy, let me ask you about, the, you know, you said in the first segment that you're not an addictive personality, no. that you don't have a problem with alcohol or drugs, but you yeah. have admitted you've been on record to saying you would have as several women a day in your heyday. That was how you trained for a fight. <laughs> Take us through a conversation when you had, when you found out you had HIV and you had to call people. How'd you find them in the first place? What was that conversation like when you had to tell them? Well, actually, a lot of them got hold of me, you know, and uh, not one person uh, out of uh, however many there were, and there were an astronomical amount there, uh, but but no one uh, no one's ever come up positive. You had conversations with Magic Johnson, too, before you had the public statement a few days after uh, your fight was called off and the Nevada Commission wouldn't sanction your fight against Weathers. What were those like, and what's your relationship like now with Magic Johnson? Well, I only spoke to him twice over the phone. Uh, you know, they they try and get you to say certain things over the phone. See, I kind of go against the grain a little bit. I speak what I know is true from what I've read from books, from uh, what God is. You know, God speaks to people. God gives you a little glimpse of your future every now and then. And, uh, you know, I'm a very religious person. And, uh, you know, I thank God that I'm here today. And, you know, I'm a person that they're put here for a reason, to serve a purpose, and I think that's to lead people to Christ. Tommy, your, your father, Tim, takes some responsibility. He was, uh, you know, his own record as being a very uh, violent father, both to your mother and to the kids as well, and he feels guilty about the situation you're in now. And at some point earlier this year, he felt like he couldn't see you anymore. Is he still in that uh, mode, or have you seen him recently? No, I haven't seen him. I haven't seen him since I've been, uh, I haven't seen my father in about two years. Him and I don't have the, the greatest relationship in the world. Um, you know, years of uh, seeing him abuse my mother uh, seemed like drove a wedge between him and I's relationship uh, as a father and son. As a business, uh, certain things that we would do, um, criminal type things. You know, until I had a son of my own, I started realizing how awful it was for him to subject his own son to do some of the things that we did. Uh, you know, and I started losing a lot of respect for him. I haven't received any letter from him or a call or any attempt to uh, uh, to communicate with me at all. But the, but that's fine. I mean, I don't. Uh, I don't really consider him my father anymore. Uh, you know, my closest thing that I have to a father was my trainer, uh, Tom Burgett, who uh, uh, trained me during my eight-year career as a fighter. Well, much more to get to with Tommy Morrison. We only got one segment left, and we continue. We'll talk about uh, some of Tommy's religious beliefs. He reads the Bible every day. He thought the world would come to an end, uh, maybe on the millennium, but maybe in the year 2000. We'll see what he thinks today, and we continue up close.